Hi everyone and welcome to Roads to Forever. I'm Terry, and in this video we continue with our advice for young adult Christians and today we're going to talk about how to live for Jesus. So if you've been wondering how to live out the Bible then this video is for you. If you haven't seen part one after watching this video go back and check it out. So let's dive right in. What did your life look like before you found Christ and what is your life now that you have really developed this relationship with Christ? Oh, that's spicy, yo. Um, <laughs> well, I don't think my life was terrible, but um, life before Christ, let me clarify. I never really didn't know Christ. I didn't have an intimate relationship with Christ. Take that back. In 2015 was when I first said Jesus' name out loud and acknowledged him out loud. So I graduated in 2015 from college. So prior to that moment, and probably including the next year or two after that, um, that life looked like a typical young adult, you know, drinking on weekends, going out. We threw a lot of parties. I, I lived in downtown Chicago in a loft apartment with, with, with two of my friends from college. We threw a party like every other weekend. Um, we, it's okay to speak your truth, brother. We, um, <laughs> we smoked a lot of weed. We, um, there were a lot of women that came in and out of the house. Um, and in college, it wasn't no different. I pledged a fraternity back in college. It was the same kind of lifestyle, just like on a smaller scale, I guess. Actually, probably larger scale. Um, so yeah, that lifestyle was reckless. It was one where... I was looking for love and 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 um, and joy in the wrong places that we, that was societal based. So like you know what I'm saying, like where you you have friends who do this stuff and it's innocent. Like you don't think back then. You're just like, oh, I'm just gonna smoke. I'm just gonna drink. I'm, I'm gonna have sex. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out. In a moment, you're like, oh, my life is good. I, I still volunteer. I still have good grades. I'm still trying to get nice with Christ. I may pray here and there. You know what I'm saying? But I was always the person anyway. In in spite of that where friends would come to me about how to pray, how to go to church, or how to be a Christian, you know, and I would, you know, raise my brow on them and whatnot, but looking back, like, I didn't I didn't know God, I didn't know Christ like that, you know what I'm saying? If I did, I wouldn't be doing what I was doing. Um, so then, after, I think, like, 20, 2018, January 17th, yeah, that was the day, that, that afternoon after work, I bought an eighth of wheat, and I went to Bible study right before I rolled up all the weed, you know, getting prepped. Went to Bible study because I was about to get, I was, I was going to get rebaptized. So I was in Bible study for like two months or so. So that was the day I told my pastor, I was like, yo, um, I have a weed addiction. He was like, you should stop that. Basically, more or less, he said, you should stop that immediately. I said, that was the first time I ever felt convicted, like deeply by Christ. I was like, all right, this is, this is it. So I threw out the eighth and I was clean for a month. And then, you know. Life happens. Life happens. I became unclean until probably like January fifth. This this year, twenty twenty, was the that's the last time I smoked weed. And for me, it was a big thing because I never was able to actually carry on not doing that for so long. But now it's like I don't even really have a desire to do it. And I thank God every day for the transformation that He's had in me because this time last year, I was battling it, but I wasn't convinced. I wasn't committed to doing so. Um, and then you talk about like being celibate or um, stopping to drink or not to drink anymore or anything like that. I'm like, I'll still have a glass of wine or something like that, but I'm not about to be in party slapped or anything like that or be lit, quote unquote. Um, so like the new life in Christ looks like put not trying to find love and peace in all those substances that, that you're used to. And so when we talked about living a, a, a new life in Christ, it's hard because you associate your fun to weed, to drugs, to women, to sex, to parties, to clubbing, to traveling, to all these things. And then when it's gone, you're like, oh, well, what do I do now? You know, so you just sit at home. You sit at home. You read your Bible. Like that's, you, I read my Bible at the crib. I pray and meditate. I call people. I, I check on them. I try to serve as, as much as I can in folks lives. But you, or, or I always get tempted to be like, hit that girl up or find the weed man, you know what I'm saying? It happens every other day, um, the, the temptation comes, but you have to keep fighting it off. So like, now it's like, how do you replace that urge or that, that temptation with something else? And so what I found is the replacement is intimacy with Christ, with spending as much time as you can in prayer and meditation, 
in reading his word because the more you put him in you, the more those other things will get out of you. And then he'll begin to, 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 to work on those things that you don't even realize, like, oh, I'm a selfish person, or damn, I'm actually impatient, or it could be anything, you know what I'm saying? That you realize that you don't get to see until the blindfold is, is, is off of you. So I feel like I've been talking a lot, so I'm gonna stop. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I gotta I gotta talk about my life. You know, a little, a little soft. A little something. So I <clears throat> I grew up in the church. Um, the church that I attend now is actually the church that I grew up in. Um, and then I went to college at 17. And honestly, when I went to college, like right before them, because, and I think about this often, that there was, the devil's timing is very, very funny. And now working as a youth leader in the church, I find it very important that when a young person says, I wanna serve the Lord, or they have any type of interest in serving the Lord, that it's very important that us as older people, whether, older young people or full-grown adults I don't know if I'll ever be full-grown but <laughs> more seasoned members in the church hear that as a soul that's crying out to know Christ better and so for me when I was like 16 years old I came up to one of the people that I respected in the church and I was like I'm on fire for the Lord but I don't really know what to do with that because it just kind of I don't really know what made me say it in that way but that's what I was feeling like I just wanted to serve the Lord I was so excited about my faith and they were like that's great that's great and that's that was the extent of the conversation and so I never really like I wasn't hostile about that it was because I didn't know I didn't know any better I was just kind of like I'm expressing this to somebody that I think that I can trust with this part of myself and they fumbled it but for me, it was just that was a critical moment that if that had been heated in a real way, that probably would have changed the trajectory of my entire life. So now fast forward that nothing happens with it between 16 and 17. I'm attending church and I'm still involved. I'm still doing everything that I used to do. And all that time was like a period of grace that they could have come back and said, like, how are you doing? Do you need Bible studies? And I would have been receptive to that. But after I went to school, I actually wanted to, so I'm originally from the Philadelphia area, and I wanted to go to the University of Pennsylvania. Did not get in, so I went to another university in the area that actually is not far from the church that I was a member of. And so like the first couple of weeks, I was very serious, and I'm like, listen, I don't even wanna be here, the school was low key trash, like I'm trying to transfer. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm on my grind, trying to like get the grades so that I can transfer to UPenn. Um, and then I made some friends on my floor because I was living on campus, I was not commuting. So I, I made some friends on my floor and they're, they're like, oh, we're going to a party. Mind you, I'm 17 and I'm a church kid. So I'm like, mm. is that legal? Like, <laughs> I'm not even 18 yet. Like, are they gonna care about this? Like, this is scary. And they're like, no, they just asked for your college ID. Like you could go. And between, like before this, I had gone to like a high school party but that's lame, like you're drinking your parents' alcohol that they locked up and you got it somehow. But, and I was just kind of like, eh, whatever. Like, I didn't really think that was for me. But I went to this party and they had all the tunes, <laughs> all the tunes. I'm dead. They had, well, they was playing reggae, they was playing hip hop. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> and from then it like completely changed the trajectory of my life. So like. We had me at 16 saying, I'm on fire for the Lord. Nothing happened. There was a whole year where that could have been cultivated and I would have been a very different person. And so at 17, where I'm still kind of like, well, eh, whatever, I go to this party and instead of going to party, and I, I heard a statistic that if a young person does not go to church within the four, first four weeks of going to college, they will not come for the entirety of their college tenure. That makes sense now. And so I didn't have that, and that is exactly what happened. I never went to church. I went like for Thanksgiving, like around Thanksgiving time. I went maybe once or twice when I came home and like my parents made me go around Christmas time. 
in the summer when I was living at home, eventually I got a camp a house off campus, so I wasn't even coming home for the summer. I would just not go. And so I started this lifestyle of just like partying, drinking, dealing with stupid people, stupid men <laughs> that were just like so damaging to to me and like everything that I grew up knowing. Um, to the point where I think, how old was I? So I had just turned 21. And this is to show you like how far gone. By the time I was 21, I got arrested for a DUI, leaving after I left work. Because I couldn't even be like, I had just turned 21, so now I'm legal. I've been drinking for, what, four years by this point? But this is finally the time that I can do it legally. And I worked at a restaurant, and I'm there, and I'm at the bar, and I'm drinking, and I'm filling myself. And then I go home, foolish, mm. and get into a car accident. I was fine. I'm still here. The car was not fine. And I end up getting a DUI. And so for me, like, by that point, I was kind of starting to, I was getting older. So I was getting a little bit more mature. And I'm thinking, like, things are starting to go well. I declared my major. So I knew I wanted to be an accounting major. I'm getting good grades. Like, all these other things are falling into place. But what was at the what was missing at the core was Christ and like my spirituality and because that was not where it needed to be everything else kind of like was falling apart so at that point I had an internship with Enterprise to work in their corporate office um, in their accounting department and after I got the DUI I had to call them so embarrassing I had to call them and tell them like listen I got arrested for a DUI can I still have the internship? Ooh. They're like, sorry, sis. When I tell you I was sick, Jeez. I was sick. And then, and then at the same time, not only does that happen, but my mom, so I find out that I can't keep the internship. My mom tells me, you know, because of the situation, you actually might have to serve some jail time. I'm like, bro. <laughs> I'm too small for this. I'm only five feet tall. So like that was not the flex for me. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, I'm just I'm just a, a little girl mm -hmm. who is in school trying to get an education. Like I cannot be going to nobody's jail. <laughs> so I'm sick. I'm sick. But this still did not force me to like seek the Lord. And God is merciful because that internship that I lost, it ended up being a blessing because I was able to go to there's an organization called NABA, so National Association of Black Accountants. So I went to the National NABA convention because I was involved, I was doing well in school, so I was involved and it was all expenses paid for me to go and ended up getting a job from that conference at Deloitte, which is like the number one accounting firm probably in the world, if not the country. So this is like the mercy of God. And so I'm like, oh Lord, you came through for the kid, I'm feeling good. <laughs> And then one of the things that I wanted to do was move to New York. So within two weeks of starting at Deloitte, I was in New York. And I had a corporate card. I'm swiping it up, swiping it up <laughs> at all the bars, all the clubs. And I'm just like still not acknowledging the fact that the Lord has really blessed me. And he was trying to get me into position, not to have worldly success but just to know him deeply and intimately so fast forward i'm 20 i guess i graduated and i was about to turn 22 um or i was 22 and so from 22 to 25 i'm living a single life ratchet single life but like sophista ratchet because i'm a young professional mm -hmm. and i got my own place and i'm living in brooklyn <laughs> and i'm popping but i'm still ratchet <laughs> I feel and so I I'm living this life and then right before my 24th no right after or right before my 25th birthday I come to a, like a crisis point where I'm I'm just like so dark so low and in that moment I'm just really kind of questioning things I have a tattoo on my arm that I got around that time because I'm trying to, buy, but trying to be spiritual, but like, I don't really know how to be because I didn't understand what it meant to be, to have a relationship with the Lord. And so like, I'm trying to like do all these outward things and, 
and make this change but it's not really sticking like i'm still i the weed man lived downstairs of of, of my apartment so so i used to like pick up from him i would go to work high i would dabble in some other things and like this is what i'm doing so i left that alone but i would just like drink a little bit so like now i'm getting better but i'm still like not happy um and i want to say like february after i turned 25 so i think this is 2015 um that february i was in a relationship with somebody and it it fails like we had been going back and forth on and off and like it was like one of those times when i'm just like we were supposed to be together for valentine's day he flopped i found out he was dealing with his old girlfriend and it was just a mess and i'm like walking in target on a saturday crying my eyes out because i'm seeing like valentine's day cards and i'm just like yo like what is my life like this is high key lane and so that night i go to sleep probably had like a little something to drink before I went to sleep didn't do nothing crazy the next day I wake up and I'm on my phone and I'm on Facebook and one of my Facebook friends asked a question something like how do you know God or something like that mm. and I don't know I just read the thread because of whatever what else do you do mm. before you go to brunch on a Sunday <laughs> you scroll Insta you scroll Facebook and so I read the thread and then she's the person responded and like posted a sermon. I don't know why, but I watched the sermon, whatever. Now I know that that was the Holy Spirit being like, it's okay, I got you. And so I watch it and I just start crying because it's like just talking about the love of God and, and all these things and like all the hurt and the pain and, and the disappointments and everything that's going on in my life. I'm just like, yo, this is deep. And I've only heard the Lord's voice audibly one time, and it was that day. And he was like, Lauren, I love you. Mm. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> looking crazy, and I'm in my bed. And when I tell you, like, from that moment, like, my life changed. And that's not to say, like, 4th of July, this was February. So 4th of July came, and I was definitely at a barbecue, turned up with some friends mm. in the Bronx. So it was a process, but... From that point, I made the decision, like, I don't really know how this looks. I don't really know what this is supposed to be like, but I want to serve the Lord because what I'm seeing is that the life that I've been living has not been satisfying to me. So what's your advice to a young adult who is thinking about being a Christian or is trying to make a decision for Christ? What would you, would you tell them? I think you, you definitely have to get in community. Because if you don't know anyone else that's trying to do what you're trying to do, you're going to resort back to either by yourself, which is can be great, but most of the time it's detrimental to how you even move in Christ. Like you can be with him in the spirit alone, but if you don't have the community around you, like your friend circle is not in the same mindset as you, you're going to go back to your old friend circle. You're going to keep circling back to what you knew because that's how the human brain works. So you have to get in community. I think the second thing that you need to do is that's honestly probably the hardest thing is to read your Bible. I know it's cliche, but it's so true. Like, and I have to force myself, like, all right, from this hour, I'm going to sit here and read Matthew. I'm going to sit here and read whatever it looks like. If I fall asleep, cool. Tomorrow I'm trying it again at the same time. But like, after like two, three months of trying that, it became fun for me. It became like, all right, I can't wait to get home and read the Bible. It was like, the, it, now it's the thing. But for for not for the first couple of months or whatnot, it was. I'm going to keep it real concise because I talk too much. Um, first, be prepared to be uncomfortable mm. because this this is a journey, it's a process. You're learning, you're growing. And I feel like with anything, we always feel like, oh, we're going to start doing something and we're just going to hit the ground running and, and be on top of it. I have been back in the church since that for the past six years. Um, and I'm still growing and I'm still learning. I'm in a better place in my relationship with the Lord but it's like as soon as you get to the mountaintop you just realize that you're at the base of another mountain and so it's always a journey but when you first start it's like dang like is any of this going to make sense is any of this going to get easier and so I would just say like Tayo said definitely get in community but understand that the trials and the frustrations are normal and 
it's growth like yeah. it'll be it'll be fine but i guarantee you that life is so much sweeter when you choose to serve the lord than when you choose all these other things because at the end of the day like i have friends who are christians but they don't really practice that mm -hmm. and i'm in the, a much better mental state than they are like i'm okay i'm more likely to take risks i'm more likely to demonstrate faith i'm more likely to be at peace or okay with certain things in the midst of a, of trials whereas like my friends are like bruh like this is crazy and it's not to say that i don't have my own moments of of lacking faith but i'm just much more equipped to handle the the challenges of life than a lot of my peers and i would not trade that because at the end of the day like they come to me and they say can you pray for me can you pray for my son can you can you pray for my relationship i don't have to say that to anybody and not that i please pray for me <laughs> so listen <laughs> prayers but i just realized that the lord wants me to come to him myself and he's willing to accept me um and so i'm i'm comfortable coming to the lord in prayer but please keep me in prayer mm -hmm. Because if any man think he stand, he better take heed lest he fall. So one last thing I want to add to that was you have to be ready to be. This is this was hard for me. It's still hard for me, but you have to be ready with two things. First thing, you have to be ready to be vulnerable. And I don't mean like vulnerable, like, oh, I'm going to tell you about my day and how I feel. I'm talking about you got to be ready to, to get hit where it hurts, like mm -hmm. to get told that you're not. To get told that you are not who you think you are. You're not as great. You're not saying you're really watching that, that you're not great, but to be humbled. Because you can think you're high and mighty, that you're doing well for the Lord, blah, blah, blah. But one experience, one relationship, That's one moment, moment is just going to change your whole perspective about who you are. And you're going to resist it. Like, oh my God, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that wasn't nothing. But when you sit back and you actually open your heart up to the to the level of conviction that he can put in your heart, it will transform the way you see everything. And you're still gonna fight it. So like, the second thing was, be ready to deal with temptation because temptation will come Facts. around. The devil loves to keep you in cycles. So the, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> the more you deviate from something that you used to do, the more it will present itself. You know what I'm saying? And you're gonna start seeing more and more until you just become immune to doing so. But Vulnerability is one of the most important things when you're in that walk because you have to be real with God. Like, so real to the point where you don't even know, am I really saying what I just said? Did I really just come on mute? Am I actually crying at work? You know what I'm saying? Like, am I really in the bathroom crying on my knees in the bathroom? Who knows what kind of, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's been my experience. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've been in work not crying. It's happened before, but like in the bathroom praying for like an hour. Where you been? I was praying. And they be like, you good? Yeah. And they like, okay. You know what I'm saying? That's what I mean by when it's like, you have to be ready for those moments because it will happen at any time. If you don't move on it, you're missing an opportunity to grow. Facts. So. And the yeah. about the cycles too, the, the beauty of it is that when you finally get the courage, like you can either continue to fall and it'd be a cycle of, of, falling and getting back up falling and getting back up and that is a the way of life that will always happen there will always be things that we're overcoming but the beauty of it is that there's also a cycle of victory so as yes. we as we take a step forward and we continue to like let that step be courage for the next step and the next step like eventually that cycle will be a victorious cycle and you'll mm -hmm. look at back and be like yo i was really bugging i've been transformed so let us know in the comments down below what resonated with you most in this video. If you enjoy this content, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe for more awesome content just like this. But before I leave you, I just want to remind you, you're only one prayer away. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.